this year marks the 10th year anniversary of me being in cybersecurity. And I think I've learned a lot in the last 10 years. And I think it's time for me to talk about the stuff that I've learned in the last couple of years and kind of share them with you and kind of talk about what I would do if I were to start cybersecurity today. Just in case you're new to the channel, let me quickly introduce myself and give you a background on who I am. My name is Ben. Most people online know me as Naham Sek. I'm a hacker and bug bounty hunter. I do public speaking, but a lot of people know me from hacking to a lot of uh, big organizations. Those are like Airbnb, Snapchat, uh, Apple, Department of Defense, you name it, I have probably hacked into them. And that's kind of where I got my quote unquote click to fame in. Now I make YouTube videos and hack on the side as just a hobby and things like that. So I kind of want to get that out of the way so you kind of know what my background is and who I'm going to talk about and who am I to talk about my 10 years of experience. But all jokes aside, I think I've learned a lot and this could be valuable to a lot of you, especially if you're just getting started with your career. And if my background story is kind of intriguing to you, drop me a comment with the word story. Maybe I'll take it and make a video out of it. But let's talk about the things that I have learned in the past couple of years and maybe some of the things that I would have done differently. Before we do that, though, let me just say that just because I say I want to do something differently doesn't mean that I have any regrets, but I just think things probably would have maybe worked out better in my favor or maybe it would have moved faster if I had done some of these things differently. So the first thing that I want to talk about is just purely just learning the basics. This is just getting some sort of a pre-security background into just cybersecurity, if that makes sense, because cybersecurity has a lot of meats and potatoes that go into it. And you have to know a little bit about everything and learn all the basics of computing and networking and internet and everything that goes in there before you even start with cybersecurity. And given my background, I didn't personally have a cybersecurity background. I didn't do an educational background in cybersecurity. So a lot of the things that I did learn was as I was hacking. So if I was hacking on a web app, I learned how to create a web application. And as I was creating them, I was also learning how to hack and so on. But I kind of wish that either I would have taken cybersecurity more seriously in my college days, even though the school that I went to didn't actually offer a cybersecurity degree or a good program, or I would have just taken some cybersecurity course that kind of gave me all the basics before I jumped into just web hacking and just dig into it. And if you're looking for a recommendation, I recommend the postgraduate program in cybersecurity by our sponsor, Simply Learn. This course is designed to give you all the skills that you need in order to get started in cybersecurity. And it also includes modules from the MIT Schwartzman College in Computing and EC Council. And the whole thing is designed to be online and you should be able to finish this in under six months by only spending five to 10 hours a week. So you don't have to make a full-time job out of this and spend 40 hours a week. And it is super, super flexible. The program covers a variety of topics like network security, ethical hacking, firewalls, honeypots, security assessments, and testing all the way to mobile and web technologies and it also gives you access to the ch kit with 25 hands-on projects so if you're interested in learning more about simply learns postgraduate program in cybersecurity, check out the link down below in the descriptions or in the pinned comments and try simply learn and take the first step towards advancing your career through online education the other thing that's cool about taking a certificate like that or just doing a course or a boot camp that's around cybersecurity, it kind of also exposes you in the different realms of cybersecurity. If you want to do a non-technical role, that's an option for you. But if you want to do a technical role that I've also pursued, then doing a course like that kind of gives you an idea of like what else is out there in cybersecurity that you could pursue. Unfortunately, I was so in love with hacking websites and web hacking and bug bounties, I never actually explored anything else. I kind of like dabbled in AppSec engineering. It wasn't for me, but there are so many other things that you can do in cybersecurity that these courses and boot camps offer to you by just learning about them and kind of picking and choosing what is that thing that you're most passionate about to make a career out of it. So that's kind of why I recommend doing a course and just learning the basics. It also gives you something to look forward to. So that's partially why I recommend doing a course like that or a bootcamp because it exposes you to a bunch of different skill sets. And who knows, you may find something that you're passionate about that's not web hacking. So that was tip number one or what I would have done differently. I think that's something that still sticks with me to this day and kind of want to go back sometimes and just do it just to say I've done it. The next thing is regardless of where you end up in cybersecurity, I think most people either go for a offensive side of job, which is a red team, or they go for the blue side, which is the defensive side of cybersecurity. 
community, you need to learn about how both of these teams work or how both of these different sides of the cybersecurity work. Because if you don't understand each side, then I think that just gives you a disadvantage with your job because one, you can't communicate to the other teams, especially if you're working in an organization where you're supposed to work with your blue team, but also learning how the defensive systems are built, what are the things that matter to those teams also makes you a better hacker and gives you an edge and advantage as far as your work goes. So I kind of wish that I would have done this early on. I didn't do this until recently where I didn't understand how blue teams work. What are the things that blue teamers look for? What are the things that they research? And honestly, learning about how they actually defend organizations makes me understand what are the things that I need to learn to become better as a hacker, to not get caught or just be able to evade the systems that are in place. This could be very, very important. Maybe not important for you in the beginning stages of your career, but that is something that I really, really recommend is just kind of dabbling and learning the basics of the opposite side of whatever you're on, kind of learning from them and implementing things that could help you with your career. This also doesn't stop at just red or blue. You also need to kind of always look out for development and the new technologies that come out because just because we're learning to break things doesn't mean that we don't have to understand how things are built. And again, personally, going back to my first point is I had to learn a lot of these on the fly as I was doing more and more, but really learning how to develop an application, creating an application, how to set up a web server and things like that as a developer also gives you an edge to understand the process of how people are thinking, especially when you are hacking into companies. So just learning what are the things that developers do? What are the tools they use? How do they think? What would be the different assumptions they make would also help you early on in your careers. And that's something that I didn't do again until recently. But speaking of development and technologies and coding, I think the, the hot topic of is coding required for cybersecurity is one that we need to address in this video. So is coding required? The answer is both yes and no. You can still get a job in cybersecurity that's not technical, that doesn't require any coding. But I honestly think if you want to progress your career and whether you want to go up the ladder or just be better as an IC, I think you need to learn how to code or at least learn how to script. And let me explain the two differences there. Scripting is just using something like Python, maybe Bash or some PowerShell to automate your day-to-day -day task, maybe create some shortcuts or some scripts that just automates your day-to-day. Coding, however, it comes to play when you actually develop something, whether it's creating some software, some web apps, and so on. I personally think that you for sure need to learn how to script, but honestly, learning how to code gives you an advantage, especially as a hacker, because you kind of understand how developers think, but also you have to make assumptions. I talked about this earlier a little bit, but you also make some assumptions because you have the experience of building apps to kind of understand the developer on the other side, the thing that you're hacking on or the person that you're going after, what is their thinking? So if you're looking at an infrastructure, if you have some experience there, then you kind of understand what are the meats and potatoes that go into that. But in contrast, if you're looking at a web application, for example, which is my experience, if you know how to set these up, you kind of make assumptions of they probably did these different things in order to make this application work. But there's also more to that. And I think if you know how to read code and write code, it gives you a super big advantage because a lot of times, especially if you're doing hacking or you're doing security research or whatever it is that you're doing on the offensive side, at least with my experience, is that a lot of times you have access to the source code of these projects. They are either open sourced or this company uses a framework that they have designed that could be accessible within their GitHub repository. So when you have access to the source code, you really are able to find and understand these different aspects of this website a lot quicker than somebody who doesn't. And personally, I didn't really do any coding, especially scripting until three or four years into my career. And then recently, it's when I've just been more intrigued about learning how to code, maybe more even with Java apps and just learning how different things are created because I'm realizing the more and more I understand how these things are created, the more it's going to help me succeed. And honestly, if you've gone to a college or you have done some cybersecurity program, especially in a formal education, this shouldn't be an issue. A lot of times I know they teach you Java, Python, and C++. So if you're in college right now, make sure you pick up one of those languages. Whatever one is more interesting to you, pick it up and just commit to it and learn everything about it. I promise you at some point it is going to come in handy for sure. The next thing is just showcasing your work and showcasing could be done in a number of different ways. If you are doing some web hacking research and 
writing a write-up could be a way of showcasing it. But honestly, going back to my previous point, releasing some of these projects you have worked on on GitHub, for example, if you create a web app, maybe you created some script that does a particular task, just putting those on your GitHub and showcasing them is a really, really good place to network specifically because people will reach out to you to ask you questions about your project. And also it shows what you're doing. And honestly, again, going back to my personal experience, I didn't really showcase a lot of my work because I was just afraid of putting things out. And the things that I did put on my GitHub were just because a lot of my friends were using it. They just wanted to have access to it and I just posted them. But I kind of had this imposter syndrome that I didn't want to post anything online. But honestly, I think that is one of the coolest things to do is to post your work online, let other people use it and use it as a networking place to leverage and meet more and more people. But also the showcasing your work goes beyond it. Do CTFs, go participate in online CTFs that are happening. Maybe a conference is hosting a online CTF that you can participate. Maybe you can go do something like try hack me hack the box hacking hub all these platforms that give you some certificate of completion or maybe they give you a leaderboard or something that you can put on your resume it's a really really good place i actually did this but I only did it with bug bounty program. So if you looked at my resume back in the day, a lot of my resume was showcasing my bug bounty work, but I wish I would have done more on the coding side and open sourcing more of my tools and things that I have done, but also like doing CTFs that shows I know more than just web hacking. And on top of all the showcasing stuff that I just talked about, a project-based learning is probably the best way to learn. So not only you are showcasing your skills and you're showcasing that you can build stuff, but you're also showing people that you're actively learning things. And that's probably one of the most powerful things that you could do on your resume and the last bit that i think is the most obvious is to just join a bunch of good communities that can support you and you can just meet people and these community could be online or in person so if you have a conference near you or even a tech conference that's not cybersecurity related go get involved and meet people networking is key in everything we do in cybersecurity and everything we do in life but in cybersecurity itself we also have access to these online communities which makes them great and a great place to just learn from each other so if you're looking for some online communities don't just go after your niche maybe you can find some of those discord groups or slack groups that are in your niche that you want to be but also branch out and go into the different related niches that are adjacent to what you want to learn so for example if you are a person that wants to get into pen testing don't just join pen testing groups and slacks or discords but also join the other discords that are maybe focused on purple teaming or blue teaming and kind of just be a fly on the wall if you want and just see what are the things that they're talking about what are the different trends and words that you can learn from them as well. So just community itself is huge. I can't stress that enough. If you are getting into cybersecurity, you need a great community and you should just meet people that you can just relate to and talk to. And the best thing about having connections like that and making friends in those communities is that during those high times that you're having success, you have people to celebrate with. And during the low times and times that you are just banging your head against the keyboard to figure things out, you also have someone to maybe complain to, vent to, but also use as a support system or just collaborate with to get through it. I think looking back, I've done a lot of these things that I talked about, but I just kind of wish I would have done more of them or I would have done some of them earlier because it probably would have helped me or maybe it wouldn't have helped me who knows but I think those are the things that I wanted to share throughout this video so to recap it all get a certification or just learn the basics through a formal education get to learning how to code or actually script showcase your work Learn the full spectrum of cybersecurity. Don't just stick to one side. Maybe focus on that one side, but also explore the other areas of blue or purple team if you're getting into red team or vice versa. And last but not least, make sure you join a community. Make some friends. I promise you networking is key in everything that we do in life. All right, that's it. Do me a favor. Do all the liking, do all the commenting. And if you're new here, make sure you subscribe so you can get notified every week when I drop a brand new video. That's it. I'll see you next week. Peace.